tonight on St. Elsewhere. Is Reinhardt acting as an individual or as a member of a terrorist group? I don't know that. Well, could you give us the name of the victim? Catherine McAllister. She was in the bank. Two of the major vessels to your heart are 90% obstructed. I'm going to save you. I'd like to learn how to swim. You can't swim? You don't have to. You moron! You know, you're a joke, Ehrlich. I mean, any idiot could have gotten that signature. They said there was a bombing three days ago that my wife Catherine was hurt. She's in a coma. Why'd you do it? You wouldn't understand. How long has his life been on? Constantly. Well, what are you doing about it? He's been sitting up in bed smoking cigarettes all night. When was the last time he was medicated? 10.50 p.m. I told him to keep his leg elevated. He's not going to listen. I got no tears. His way is give me Demerol, give me the morphine. Demerol, 75 milligrams. Distrol, 75 milligrams. Q4 hours, PRM pain. Every four hours, Skilling. He's been due for over half an hour. Do you think you can free yourself to give him his medication? I got 32 patients to cover, Dr. Morrison, and only two hands. Mr. Reinhardt blew up a bank and two people died, and the lady upstairs in ICU is very critical. I'll get to him when I get the chance. Give it to me. Didn't realize you had such a soft spot for terrorism. I don't care if you don't like your job skilling. Just do it. I'll call you the next time he rings for assistance, Dr. Morrison. Just roll over a little bit. This way is the thing. 
gets involved. This press conference has dragged on long enough. I want to go get something to eat before I'm 30. Dr. Westfall, will Reinhardt be in any condition to stand trial? Well, as we stated previously, uh, Andrew Reinhardt sustained uh, multiple abrasions, a concussion, several small facial lacerations. He's in some pain, but, uh, but he's in no present danger. We consider his uh, condition to be satisfactory. Is Reinhardt acting as an individual or as a member of a terrorist group? I don't know that. You'd have to talk to the police or the FBI, I think. Was there a specific reason why he set off a bomb in the bank? I'm sorry, I can't answer any of these questions. I'm here to give medical information. Well, could you give us the name of the victim, the woman that you're treating? Yes, her name is Catherine McAllister. She's 32 years old. She's from Minneapolis, Minnesota. What's her status? Well, she's listed as serious. Well, that's not exactly correct, Donald. Uh, we consider her condition to be critical. She was technically dead when she arrived here. Under the guidance of Dr. Ben Samuels, our trauma team initiated emergency life support measures, which resulted in reviving her vital signs. Dr. Samuels, did you actually bring Catherine McAllister back from the dead? Well, uh, in a clinical sense, I suppose you can say that's true, yeah. Have you been involved in cases such as this before? Yes, I have. Uh, this, uh... Actually, uh, Dr. Craig has had far more experience with this sort of thing than I have. Hundreds of times. As I was saying, Catherine McAllister sustained abdominal wounds with intra-abdominal hemorrhage. How long did you operate on her, Dr. Craig? In point of fact, I was not the surgeon of record. But as department chairman of surgery, I was in constant communication with the uh, surgery team and served in a supervisory capacity. <laughs> now, that is not to say that I was holding the surgeon's hands. But my boys are the best. I'd put them up against any big-name team in the country. Boston General may have its matinee idols and art gallery walls, but when it comes to bread and butter, medical care, there isn't a hospital in this state that can beat us. We have our hand on the pulse of this city. Now, we are aware of the public perception of our institution, which has been fostered by you gentlemen, as a second-rate hospital. Now, I am sick of hearing this hospital snidely referred to as St. Elsewhere. Let me tell you something. St. Allegius isn't elsewhere. This is the place to be. What were the surgical procedures, Dr. Craig? I was getting to that. Hey! <clears throat> Listen up. Now, first, we did an exploratory laparotomy. You mean you wasn't holding your hand? The man never ceases to amaze me. Explain that an rupture here and here. It's insane. We're on call every other day. That's 36 on and 12 off, and then 36 can drag on to be even more. I don't know what I'm doing. I think I'm killing people. Uh, that's why we have backup. Oh, come on, Phil. The senior residents can't back us up. They don't have the time. They just finished operating on six people in the last two nights. Now they're getting some sleep to operate on the next guy. They don't have the time. It's economics. Hey, I had to borrow $60,000 to make it through medical school. That means I'm going to be paying off $500 a month for the next 20 years. Where are the violins? I know it's rough, Chandler, when your old man puts you through. Not really. Morning. Morning. Dr. Armstrong, how's Mr. Gorski? We ruled out osteo and decided it was just a soft tissue infection that we've been treating with IV antibiotics. How's he been responding? He's 
far as the infection goes, fine, but he's getting really abusive and he's threatening to walk out. Sounds like Mr. Gorski suffering from cabin fever. Three weeks in bed with an infected toe. Well, if the antibiotics have been appropriate, why don't we just uh, give him the equivalent in P.O. meds and send him on his way? Hallelujah. Dr. White, how is our hypertensive Mr. Lindley doing? Uh, not very well. He's shaking the DTs, but we still need to get a handle on the blood pressure. And what, uh, what medication has he been on? Hydrochlorothiazide, 50 milligrams, BID. Have you considered trying proponamol? Yes, sir. 40 milligrams, TID, intermittently over the last two years. Morning, Mr. Lindley. <sighs> Hours. Oh, the hours. I used to fantasize about sex. Now all I dream about is sleep, losing my rabid impulses. Uh, she had a rough night. Who's that? Catherine McAllister, the bomb victim. Her neural status is the same? Let me check. Uh, still in coma. Glasgow scores improved, occasionally voluntary movement. A lot of people came down. Well, what about her husband? Did they locate him? Yeah, they got him late last night. He's flying in from Europe this morning. No infiltrates, no cardiomegaly. No, her heart size is normal. Mm -hmm. Dr. Rogers. Maybe she threw a pulmonary aneurysm. Dr. Rogers, 1742. Is she in hysteric? No, she's homesick. Uh, she says she wants to go home. A poor, inspiratory film. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's only down to eight. Morning, Dr. Craig. Get another PA view. What about a lateral? Excuse me? Mr. Broadwater, how are we this morning? Feeling pretty good. Well, I have some good news and I have some bad. Two of the major vessels to your heart, the left anterior descending artery and the circumflex artery, are 90% obstructed. But I feel fine. You didn't feel fine when you had those chest pains walking up a flight of stairs now, did you? Did I have a heart attack? No, but when we put you on the treadmill, your electrocardiogram indicated ischemia. And the angiography, do you remember when we put the dye through the heart? Revealed obstruction. Very serious obstructions. 90% obstructed? Let me show you something, Mr. Broadwater. What does this look like to you? Rubber tube. Arteries are tubes that carry the blood and oxygen from the heart. Now, bear with me. If we obstruct the flow of blood and oxygen to the brain, what do you think happens? I don't believe this. I'm only 40 years old here. You're fat. Doc? You smoke. Your father died of a heart attack when he was 42. But, doctor, there must be You're some... You're walking a tightrope, Mr. Broadwater. If it isn't the stairs today, it'll be washing the car tomorrow. Or bouncing your little boy on your knee. Or, if you're lucky, when you're sleeping. Oh, my dear God. Now for the good news. I'm going to save you. How? Ah. Triple bypass. Surgery? We'll give you a few moments to think about it. Notify your loved ones. Do I have your complete cooperation? I guess so. Excellent. What's the matter, Levine? In two days, and Reinhardt still won't eat. Okay. What's the problem? Food stinks. It stinks for everybody. Is this some kind of protest? You're a real quick study. Listen, if you're thinking hunger strike, forget it. We don't look very kindly on attempted suicide. You wouldn't believe the paperwork. If we have to, we're going to stick a tube down your nose, into your stomach, and feed you that way. That won't taste very good either, but you are not going to starve. I want to pull them out. And if that doesn't work, we'll put main lines right into your veins. And if you pull those out, we'll put you in restraints. Because, you know, we don't have to deal with this.
These wise guns. <laughs> Listen, what we did was irrational, yes, but it, it was spontaneous. It was based on pure emotion and strong mutual attraction. And personally, it was incredibly satisfying. And, and neither of us has anything to be ashamed or guilty about. Oh, Wayne. You're so good. And I'm so bad. <laughs> I'm bad. I'm so bad, I can't even... <laughs> no, you're not. Yes, I am. Oh. I'm bad. And you're so good. No, Kathy, so I'm, good. I'm, I'm not. So good. I, I'm not. The best way. I'm not. Very So, Jane, how are we feeling today? Oh, I see we're Tweety today. You know, I was hoping that we were going to be Jane today. But I guess we're not. All right, let's see. What kind of bird are we? Are we a sparrow? No, we're much too pretty to be a plain old sparrow. Mm. A robin? Mm. I didn't think so. Well, I don't get it, Tweety. I give up. Again. Um, a mockingbird. A mockingbird. What took you so long, Dr. Beale? That's the state bird of Mississippi, your home state. Oh, it's very good. <laughs> very good. What happened over the weekend? I was married to Marlon Brando, but he didn't like the way I spoke French. Time goes round and round. We'll put those stupid clocks in this place anyway. Marlon Brando loves dark women because he can't see them. Your father still hasn't called? Fear of flying can be a real problem. Well, I guess we're all afraid of something or other. Yeah, but for a bird, it can be disastrous. <laughs> what are you afraid of? Well... I'm not too fond of water. Guys, we're going to have a slice of ice. Enjoy everybody's favorite. Delicious golden brown french fries. And that's not all. And if you order right now, you get a So we ordered a second PA and lateral. So Oshlander calls in Volker and Ragusa. Uh huh. What did they say? They didn't. Uh huh? Napkins. The guy is wearing paper napkins in the OR. Look at this. Started with diapers, worked its way right up to surgical linens. Oh, no, progress. How was the woman you operated on, that one in the bank? Uh, she made it off the table, but the prognosis is uh, marginal. The terrorist, uh, what's his name? That's your patient, right? Here is a real delight. No, no idea. Mm. Well, two things you don't choose, your parents and your patients. Cheer up, it'll get worse. Dr. Derwin, please come to recovery. Dr. Derwin, please come to recovery. She's 11 years old and she's got a body like Sophia Loren. 
come on, this case. I'm serious. I see it all the time. Now, this is just a theory, but you see all the time. Nine, ten-year-old girls, bodies by Fisher. I don't know about you guys, but when I was in the fifth grade, I do not remember girls looking like that. As far as I can remember, the first girl that struck me that way was B.B. Wellnitz, and that was in the ninth grade. Hamburgers? Exactly. Those fast food hamburger joints, they fatten the cattle with estrogen, right? Hormones, because it's more economical. It's common knowledge. It's all economics. Life and death is economics. And hamburgers. You couldn't afford to buy a hamburger if they didn't fatten the cattle with estrogen. Where does it go? It stays in the meat. It doesn't all get metabolized. It doesn't all get passed through the cattle's urine. It's still in the meat. And that, my fellow workers, is why we see all these prepubescent little girls, 9 and 10 years old, with developed breasts. Well, it isn't quite ready for the New England Journal of Medicine, but... I'm mean, not only that, I'll bet that estrogen is causing a rise in testicular cancer in boys. Oh, for crying out loud, Christmas. So what do you think? Has Dr. Berger seen this? I didn't want to bother him. Since he's the best radiologist we've got, I think he ought to take a look. No books at the table, though. That tastes too much like the food. It's very confusing. I was scrubbing with Craig this afternoon. Oh, yeah? That's very interesting. I hope you're up on the vascular anatomy of the heart. I'm working on it. Yeah, I saw him through a scalpel at a resident once who didn't have it down, you know. But he just nicked him a couple of stitches. Nothing to worry about. God's sake, how long has it been? It's been over now. Mr. and Mrs. Reinhardt? Yes. Yes, I... I I'm do. Dr. Morrison. How, how do you do? You do? I'm treating your son. Yes. How is he? Where are these... Uh, can we talk in here? Please. I'm sorry, I'm late. It's all right. Can I get you anything? Would you like coffee no, or something no, like that? I, I, I would fine. We, we just like to know. How is He's in pain. Or as Dr. Zilla puts it down in the report that Mr. Francis is doing fine. His bowels are doing wonderfully. It's his hives that are killing him. My nurse tells Dr. Dilla the old man is going to kill himself if he doesn't get any relief. Dr. Dilla looks at Mr. Francis and all he sees is bowels, bowel vision. Then he dresses my nurse down for writing a report on his hives when he was admitted for his bowels. Are you listening to me? He still has baby fat, for Pete's sake. Mr. Francis? Andrew Reinhardt. I'm talking to you about Mr. Francis. I know, I know. Do you suppose the uh, hives could have anything to do with the operation? What do you mean? I don't know. Uh, some um, allergic reaction. To what? I don't know. You're a doctor. You're supposed to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The new FBI. First, it's mustaches, then hot tubs, then creative divorce. I beg your pardon? The FBI is concerned about security. I told them not to worry that we're going to move Reinhardt up to the jail ward as soon as there is an empty bunk. Surgery last night? No, I was sending all my card game out in Essex. So. Poker? No, crazy eights. <laughs> well, I, I guess it's probably a, a bad time to ask for a favor, huh? Right. I'd like to learn how to swim. Do you learn how to swim? Nope. But your old man was a shrimper. I mean, all the stories about the Gulf of Mexico and shrimp. And you can't swim? Not a lick. I thought you might be able to help me. Pass. All those stories about 
about you being the backstroke champion of Dartmouth. Butterfly. I figure you're the best man for the job. What do you want to know how to swim for? I mean, you already know how to drink. Drinking's a lot more fun. You can't drown. Ben, um, you, you know I'm a camper. A backpacker. Mm -hmm. I've been dating this, this lady, Rebecca, and I promised to, to take her river rafting on the White River. What'd you do that for? It's for her birthday. So what do you say? Buy her a cake. I could really use your help, Ben. Neil, you're a psychiatrist. You're supposed to understand subtext, right? I mean, what I'm saying is no, but the subtext is drop dead, drown, I'm tired. Surely we can strike some sort of bargain that would be mutually no, advantageous. No bargain. Surely we can do that, Ben. Neil. I think this is something to consider. No deal. Oh, I really do, Ben. Something to consider. Oh. <laughs> Eight, eight years you've been living in the United States and you still don't speak any English, is that right? You still don't speak any English. Come on, you gotta speak some English. You can't get around the United States unless you speak some English. Come on now. you to answer me in English because this is the United States, man. Now, what's bothering you? How long has your belly been hurting you? I don't want to hear that! It's about time. I've been calling the nurse. I guess the buzzer's out. It smells terrible in here. Yeah, well, I told you I was calling the nurse. What was I supposed to do? I'll get somebody. I heard you saw my parents. Yeah, they seem like nice people. You surprised? They're worried about you. Well, that's what parents do, you know. Worry. I bet your parents are really proud of you. Doctor. Respectable career. Making all that money. Where are you from, Stretch? Washington State. Washington State. You're all right, Morrison. You take good care of me. Understand something. I'm a doctor. As long as you're my patient, I'll take care of you. I may hate it, but I'll do it. I'll get somebody to change the sheets. And yeah, make sure you get someone in to fix the buzzer. Come in. Stephen McAllister. Mr. McAllister, please sit down. They said there was a bombing three days ago that my wife Catherine was hurt. How is she? She's in a coma. What happened? A bomb went off in a bank. We're from Minneapolis. I'm an attorney, maritime law. I was in Italy when they got hold of me. I took the first... Is she going to live? She suffered considerable injuries, Mr. McAllister. Both her lungs were collapsed by shrapnel, and we had to remove a section of her large intestine, and as I say, she's in a coma. And we don't know why, whether it's a concussion from the blast or temporary insufficient oxygen supply to her brain. Catherine's a psychologist. She's here for a conference. She always takes a train or a bus because she's afraid to fly. She I would like to see my wife now. Beneath right oracle to coronary sulcus. The posterior descending branch runs down the posterior interventricular sulcus to apex. And the good old marginal branch, Dr. Craig, follows the right margin to apex. 
You got it. You're a chump, Randy, is what you are. Because you bought from Crichton in the first place. And in the second... Um, I don't want to hear it, Randy. I don't want to hear it, Randy. In the second place, we're going to finish this conversation. What? I need another cautery in four. In four? Erickson, he's supposed to have been out of there an hour ago. He's barely. taken it from a simple to a radical and threw two cauteries off the wall. Yeah, Randy, just barely. Well, that means i got to take a sterile one off of Dunbar's case. Samuels has a stapler for the Hendrix colon, but he hasn't got the staples. Third, maybe fourth drawer. And in the second place, Randy, because somebody down there lost a 50 case receipt after having bought the 50 retail to begin with. I need these stamped. Did anesthesiology clear Broadwater? Well, the Koshar cleared him, but I couldn't get the consent. Why not? He wants to think it over. You moron! You know, you're a joke, Ehrlich. I mean, any idiot could have gotten that signature. When I'm on that board, I'm on it to stay. I cut when I'm ready. Not tonight, not tomorrow, today. Get that line off my name. Yeah, Randy. Consent form. You didn't sign it. I just want some time to think things through. You just want to have some time, Mr. Broadwater? If you're six feet under, you'll have plenty of time. Think about that. Here, I need a witness. They say is that you should think of it as just a great big old bathtub, is what they say. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to kickboard all the way down to that end of the pool, all right? That's an obtainable goal at this point, is it? Look, it's okay. I'm going to be right here beside you, all right? All right, let's push off, put your tummy on the board, and kick, all right? Not so hard, not so hard. Good. All right. Good, good. Easy, just relax. Easy, easy, just relax. Relax. Try to kick from the hips. All right. All right. Good. Good. Excellent. Way to go. Way to go. From the hips. All right. Good, Bill. Good. The old shrimp would be proud of you. I think, I think, I think I got a cramp in my leg. All right. Now, it's probably just your knees knocking together. All right. Now, just relax. We're going to go back the same way we came. Put your belly on the board. And let's kick. All right? All right. Let's go. All right. From the hips. I feel it again, Bill. Just keep kicking. No, 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 no. I feel it. No, no, come on. Keep I feel it. Strip. Come on. Just hold on. I feel my leg. Thank <laughs> you. 
stay on the land, the other. Go mountain climbing. Do not move from the land. Gases, P8749, PCO238, PO296. One hundred and forty thousand hits of nicotine a year for at least fifteen or twenty years from the looks of this mess. Who here smokes? Dr. Ehrlich smokes. Figures. Got a hole. You smoke, Louise? Not so much as a puff. <clears throat> Filthy habit. My wife tried starting 25 years ago, right after we got married. God knows what got into that. But I nipped that one quickly enough. No smoking in the car, no smoking in the house. I mean, if you want to smoke, you go out in the front lawn where everybody can watch you and goggle before you even look at me again. A filthy habit. What's the main flow? Flow meter. Uh, 60 to 65. I thought you got me a better vein than that. Try it again. Uh, yeah, 68. Give me that. Uh, 78. Oh. Moron. Let's take this. Ehrlich, what are the arteries of the heart? And you want to be a surgeon. Dr. Craig, your scrubs are coming apart. What? They're melting down the back. Oh, for God's sake. Prep the next graft. Sorry about your wife, Mr. McAllister. I hope she'll be all right. Have you ever been in Mexico or the San Joaquin Valley? I don't know, sir. Interesting, interesting. See this? And look at those granulomatous changes there. Hmm. I think what we need is a new set of x-rays. Repeat them, including oblique views. 
be my husband it's still dark out i put the eggs in the fridge man mm -hmm. where do you want the butter <sighs> your brother called yeah what's up he graduated Gun and badge and everything. And everything. Mm. Mm. Bottle light's a little weak. What time is it? Oh, now don't go getting old on me. I'll be right back. Are you on Thursday night? Uh uh. I got some Celtics tickets from the sports department. Uh-huh. It's just an exhibition game or something, but I figured a freebie's a freebie, and with your love for the Celtics only being outweighed by your wild and passionate love for me, I grabbed them. Starts at 7.30. Press box and everything. Guns, not hypodermics. And it's the. Hey, so you choked. I yeah, choked. I almost wet my pants, my paper pants. Craig's evaluating me, he thinks I'm an idiot. You better spit it out while you're trailing him in post office. I feel sick just thinking about it. changing rotations. Another residence can be taken care of you. Did you come down here to tell me that? No.
Catherine McAllister. She was in the bank. that all about? Was I supposed to feel something, Morrison? What do you feel? You mean legally or in my soul? Legally, it was an accident. In my soul, none of your damn business. I've got so much anger towards you. And it hasn't made for good doctoring. Yeah, I know you say you believe in something, that you did this for a reason. I know that. But what you've done... There's a chilling perversion of everything human. You're privileged, Reinhardt. You've been handed everything. Why? Why'd you do it? You're soft. You're weak. You wouldn't understand. No, I guess not. Right. Take him back to his room. Mr. Broadwater? Great. That's terrific. You have the look of a survivor. No bleeding? Oh, and this must be young Master Broadwater. You know, you look just like your dad. You know what I have here? This is a letter from my son. He's grown up now and he's already in medical school. He's doing just fine. Eighth in his class. Congratulations. And do you know what he wants to become when he's finished studying? A surgeon. Just like his old dad. And someday, if you're lucky, maybe he'll operate on you. Hmm? Fathers and sons. Well, you really do look half well, Mr. Broadwater. I'll be back tomorrow. Mrs. Broadwater, your dad's going to be just fine. I'm the only one who could have saved his life. Mrs. Baker, please Excuse me, Dr. Craig? Uh-huh. You know that question, the one you asked me in surgery? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I thought that maybe I, uh... Yeah? Well, I thought that uh, maybe now would be a, a good, uh, I mean, a few... Today, times, huh? early. Today. Okay. The right originates in right aortic sinus, runs to the right, beneath right oracle to coronary sulcus. Posterior descending branches down to the posterior interventricular sulcus to apex. The marginal branch follows right margin to apex. Excellent, Ella. Excellent. Son, is there anything you need that we can get for you? Money. I need it to buy off the orderlies and the practical nurses. It's the only thing that gets them moving. You want to bribe them? Oh, Lois. It's not bribery, Mother. It's called tipping. How much do you need, son? Well, the bigger the tip, the better the service. Couple hundred. Here. We, we talked to that lawyer, that Mr. Raveling, and he said that things aren't as bad as they look. No? 
No, he said there are basically two ways to go, since it's your first felony charge, and you didn't intend to hurt anyone. No one was supposed to be in there when the bomb went off. It's... What's the second option? Well, it's uh, t temporary insanity. Mr. Raveling seems to think that he knows some psychiatrists who will be sympathetic. Look, you tell that old bastard we want to see some results, right? Because, I mean, if he can't do the job, we'll get someone better. I know you can do it. You're not going to let those pigs hang me out to dry, are you? Son, we're, we'll do everything we can, you know that. I know you will, Dad. You'd never let me down before. Uh-huh. Dr. Westfall, can we talk? I was just leaving. Okay. Sorry. Jack. My kids won't let me tuck them into bed anymore anyway. What's up? I saw uh, Mr. McAllister outside his wife's room. Boy, what a shame. Is she going to be all right? Everybody keeps asking me that, and I keep saying the same thing. I don't know. You know, it's ironic, isn't it? Reinhardt sets off a bomb. Kills two people. Maybe a third. And he's going to be okay. And we do everything we can to make sure he's going to be okay. And the only thing he feels for you or me or McAllister or his parents or anybody is contempt. This obnoxious, withering sarcasm. And we do everything we can to make him okay. We can't choose our patients. When I got out of college, my folks wanted me to go to law school. But my wife and I had other plans. We bought a van. Traveled around the country for a year and a half. Said we wanted to experience things. But the truth is, I just didn't want to go to law school. And the reason I didn't want to go is because I knew I didn't want to defend someone who's guilty. Now, I understand why lawyers have to defend guilty people and why doctors have to treat terrible human beings. But I've got to tell you something. The reasons aren't good enough. Because in order for me to be a good doctor, I've got to separate my feelings from myself. And that scares the hell out of me. Because if I don't know what I feel, I don't know what I believe in or who I am. You know, uh, when I first started my internship, I was a very happily married man. But I fell in love with one of my patients. Now, she didn't know it. I don't think she knew it. Maybe she did. I don't know. But I'll tell you something. I suffered. I used to carry her x-rays around with me. <laughs> that is true. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, doctors starting out care too much and then... They get older, they don't seem to care enough. And they seem to become inured to their own feelings or to other people's pain. It's a... I'm going to go home. You know something? I think you would have made a damn fine lawyer. Good night. Good night.